All right guys, today I'm gonna to show you how you can use our paint to revamp your lamp. So I bought this at a secondhand store for next to nothing. The lampshade is pretty disgusting, so we're gonna replace that one. But I'm gonna show you how to paint it. We're gonna paint it black sheet today, and then we're gonna use a gold um, leaf over some of the edges to accent what looks to be kind of like a bamboo finish. So, oops, just clean her off pretty well, because as I've said in some other videos, but just as a reminder, the paint sticks to whatever is on top. So if that's dust, it's sticking to the dust and that's gonna be when you see cracking and chipping. So we just wanna make sure we get this guy really nice and clean. But the cool thing about this paint is it works on porcelain, it works on mirror, it works on fabric, it works on wood. So today we're gonna see how it works on porcelain. Now it's time to get the paint prepped. So, already kind of opened this up, but I always just grab like a disposable fork. If I'm doing a small project, I actually just put it in the blender if I'm going to be using the whole can, but I'm not going to be. A lot of people like to go directly out of the can. I don't know, me personally, I like to just mix it in a bowl here. This is actually a pretty good consistency already. Sometimes if you leave it in the jar for a while, it can get a little um, tougher. To add just a little bit of water, because I really like that really clean, strokeless finish. So it's not going to be easy to achieve on this because there's so many 3D elements to this, but we're going to give it a go. Be gentle at first to get it in there. You're going to splash it all over yourself. And then the goal is to have no bubbles, but a nice consistency, like a thick, thick soup. I like using these cheap brushes, the chip brushes, because um, they're cheap. And this paint dries so darn fast that if you use an expensive brush, you're probably just gonna ruin it. But um, here we go. So, just paint the whole thing in this one color to begin with. Probably will need two coats. And with these brushes, and because there's so many crevices, you just kind of chip down into those areas. It's not going to look pretty at first. You really chip down in there and then you can smooth it out afterwards. So. All right, so I almost have the first coat on here. I am going to do two coats. And after that, we're going to let it dry. And then we'll come back to it, and if there's any runs or anything like that, we can slightly sand them off, but mm, we're pretty good. I just do it on my counter because just with soap and water, it'll come off of the table, but you can always put something down. Okay, don't be discouraged if your first coat doesn't look very good, because it's probably not going to. Don't try to like overpaint it to make it look good. Um, more coats will make it look better. So this one is dry. So now we're gonna put a second coat on. And it's amazing how the second coat really finishes it. So you can either use this rub and buff, which I like, it's in like a cream form, or you can actually use like leaves. I find this simpler to use when it comes to something like this, but you can um, do whatever you prefer. I am doing antique gold today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna very imperfectly accent some of the ridges. Go with a light hand. So I'm holding the back of the Q-tip instead of the very tip, because if I went on the very tip, it would be so exact. But when you hold, just like a paintbrush, if you hold it from the back, um, it's less perfect. lamp is so simple 
that even a puppy can do it, right? But it's so fun, this lamp was kind of drab and gross and I mean, why don't you just grab one of the ones that you're thinking about giving away and try it out. Practice on a couple. I think that this is completely different and it's gonna go great in our entryway. And it was a piece that somebody had gotten rid of and that I picked up for $10. So it looks a lot more expensive than that now.